What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. Thanks very much for being here. We've got a massive Monday ahead of us. Going to go and do the Monday post, and I had a total of 21 sales come through over the weekend. You'll see the fees, the postage, and the cost of goods there. It was a 400 and $37 profit weekend, which is a little bit less than normal. In today's video, I'm gonna go through five of my favorite sales from the weekend, and then I've got a couple of questions that you guys have submitted that I wanna answer. So, big episode, we'll see you back at home. All right, a couple of pairs of shoes to take you through. The first one are these Fila Disruptors. There they are there. So these were a pair of brand new shoes, US size six, in an op shop for 40 bucks. So I've gone ahead and grabbed these because I have sold these shoes before. Definitely ones to be on the lookout for, especially if you can find them brand new around that $40 price point. These have sold on a best offer for $90, guys. So 90 bucks for a pair of brand new shoes, pretty common on eBay. So I definitely think there's a place for going out into your local retail stores and trying to find maybe 60 to 70% off the recommended retail price and then trying to sell it for about 20% off the recommended retail on eBay. I do it quite a bit. This one was an op shop purchase, but I am often going into the retail stores and buying brand new pairs of shoes that have a really good sell through rate on eBay. And that's the trick with retail arbitrage. You just want to make sure you have a good sell through rate before you commit to the purchase. But these feeler disruptors, they've made me about a $30 profit and I'm pretty happy with that. The other one is the brand Sketches. Now I bought these in a flea market for $14. I bought a number of shoes off a lady only two weeks ago, so it was a really quick sell through rate. These have gone on to sell yesterday for $66.50. So a really quick turnaround in just two weeks to get a $66.50 sale price I thought was pretty good. I don't really typically talk about this brand too much. I am starting to pick it up a whole lot more than I ever used to before. One really kind of telltale sign you want to look out for is you might see in there it says memory foam. Memory foam air cooled sketches. If it's got that memory foam sole, it generally goes on to sell pretty well on eBay. So these being light new condition, no wonder I was able to get a pretty top price price of $66.50 off buying them for $14. I've made myself about a $35 profit with that one. The DVDs and the video games are selling pretty well for me still, guys. And this one here was an awesome little sale we had over the weekend, Ratchet Gladiator. Now, I bought this in a bundled lot with a console at a flea market. And what I typically do when I'm buying my video game consoles is I pick out the good games, just like this one, and I sell them off individually. And then all the cheap games I do with the console to get the maximum amount of profit out of it. This one sold for $32.50, and I sort of class it as a couple of dollars in the purchase that I made with the whole console bundle. Um, so to be able to make myself a close to $20 profit on this one, I'm absolutely wrapped, and it is a pretty quick sell-through rate as well. So Ratchet and Clank or Ratchet Gladiator, a couple of really good games in that video series to be looking out for. Now, you guys know how much I love selling my sporting gear. Well, I've got a couple of absolute beauties to take you through. The first one here is this Queensland State of Origin jersey, extra large. It's a vintage 1990s model. This is an absolute beauty. And whenever you find these and list them up on eBay, you generally get a bunch of views, a bunch of watches, and then maybe a couple of offers within the very first day of listing. And that was the case with this one. It sold for $95, a really good sale price. I typically like to try and get a hundred bucks for them. Um, it actually came from a consignment bundle that I'm doing for a lady. I'm taking a 35% cut. So to be able to get this one sold for 95 bucks, take off fees and postage, I might be able to make myself a good 20 to $25 worth of a cut out of that sale. So all I did was take a few photos and list it up on the very same day it sold. So to be able to make a quick 20 bucks out of that, I didn't think was too bad. And then the other one that I've got here is this 2005 uh, Wallabies. We've got a Wallabies quarter zip jumper here. Um, so the rugby union team, uh, the national rugby union team, the Wallabies, this is an absolute beauty. And uh, I got a $59.95 sale price on it as well. So again, guys, the sporting uh, merchandise, it does go on to sell for some great money. $59.95, I'll, I'll take 100% profit on this one. Thank you very much. So that's gonna end up being about a good, I don't know, 40 to $45 after you ship it off for $7.50. And I only picked it up for about $8, I think, in the op shop. So uh, look, Wallabies, anything Wallabies merchandise, especially if it's a little bit older like this one being 2000 2005 there, um, that was an absolute steal. So to be able to sell it for $59.95, I thought it was pretty epic.
I put a post up on my Instagram yesterday asking for you guys to send through some questions for today's video. And thank you very much for those that did. I had quite a number come through. I'm going to answer as many of them as I possibly can in this video. I'm going to keep it really short and sharp as well. The first one that I had came from Danny 886 and she said, why don't I charge for postage? And I really wanted to clear that up today. And I definitely do charge for postage in all of my items. I guess I've always had a free postage model. And an example of that would be trying to sell a pair of shorts, you know, for 20 bucks. I'll list that up for 27.50 free postage by now. And, and that might look like I'm undercutting the overall sale price that I want to get for it, but it's definitely not. I want to get $20 for those 27.50 buy now shorts. So it's purely a psychological sense for me. What would a buyer most want? They would enjoy the benefit or perceived benefit of free postage. So they're more likely to commit to the purchase. It's just my opinion. A lot of people go down the paid postage model. A lot of people go down free postage. I'm a firm believer in the free postage model and I think I'm just going to continue to do it. Um, but by no means, I really want to make that clear, by no means am I undercutting myself in profit by going down the free postage model. We also had a question from Yellow Brick Promotions who asked if I would be on their podcast to share my story. And absolutely guys, I'd love to. Um, shoot me an email in the description below and we'll make it happen. Winnie, Winnie. Oh, hello mate. How are you? How are you? Are you good? Hey, you little cutie. Say hi to everybody. Say hi. We've got another question to answer. Can you help me? Do I make more money selling on eBay or on YouTube? Well, right now I spend about 50-50 of my time, 30 hours a week on YouTube, 30 hours a week on eBay, yet YouTube only accounts for 20% of my earnings and eBay accounts for 80%. So I'm hoping over time as I continue to work on this YouTube channel, I can get the percentages to be what I put into it. If I'm putting in 50-50, I'd like to receive a 50-50 balance in income, but right now it is very eBay dependent. But hopefully over time that can change. But I'm loving doing both. It's nice to actually be able to earn a dollar on YouTube. It's a real slog um, to get yourself into a position where you do earn decent money. And right now, it's literally only 20% of what I make. So I'm going to continue to plug away at it, see if the percentages change over time. And fingers crossed it does because I'm absolutely loving making these videos. I just realized that I didn't have the microphone on for that last question. So hopefully this one sounds a little bit better. The next question is around passion and what got me into reselling. And look, I've always been in the sales game. I love selling, I love communicating. And uh, when I got out of the AFL system after 10 years of, of doing sales-based roles, I was really unsure of what I was gonna get into, but I did know that I had a small window to be able to attack anything that I wanted to do, which was really quite unique. You always get sort of stuck in a job and then you don't really have an opportunity to kind of break away and get out of it. It's always a tougher decision. But for me, I was kind of forced into it. And I thought, look, if there was ever a chance to give anything a go, now would be the time. And I chose to get into YouTube. I chose to get into eBay because it was working for yourself. And it was still ticking the box of being able to sort of fulfill that sales type role that I absolutely love to do and to be able to communicate with this YouTube channel. So um, to be able to work for myself, be my own boss, there were some dreams there, some goals goals there that I kind of wanted to try and achieve. And you know, a year and a half later, here we are, where I'm now doing it as a full-time income. So I think the biggest thing here is to really just kind of be self-aware to what you're interested in and what you're passionate about and kind of really attack it, really work really hard and, and, and just know that you can monetize any form of passion out there. So um, for me, it's sales. It will always be sales. And that's the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. Which leads in really well to this next question that we got from Denica who asked, what is the biggest lesson that I've learned over the last 12 months of reselling full time? And for me, the biggest lesson that I've learned is that it is actually best to grow slow. It's really imperative that you guys understand that this is gonna take a very, very long time. And if you're not passionate about what you're doing, if eBay is really not your thing and you think you can make money quick, um, you're gonna fall off the tracks pretty quickly. Now, look, I knew before I ever got into it that I was starting from ground zero. I knew absolutely nothing. And I knew that it was gonna take a really slow process for me to be able to get to the goals that I'd set for myself over a pretty long period of time. I set myself three years. I set myself three years from a sense of earning capacity um, for both YouTube and eBay. And I knew that I was starting from scratch. So the biggest lesson that I've learned is that's actually the best way to go about it. Give yourself a really big runway, get into the place of loving what you're doing, and then really just make sure you're chipping away at it every single day, ticking the little things off. Because if you keep doing that over time, the big picture will come into effect. So I've definitely learned to uh, yeah grow slow. The other one as well is um, that you really can you can really can monetize your passions as I touched on before. So you know I didn't realize that you could start a YouTube channel and earn money within the first five months. I, 
I had no idea of that concept 18 months ago. I had no idea that I could live on the earnings of selling stuff on eBay, use shoes and clothing and to have a full-time job out of that working from home. You know, I speak to my friends and family about that when I first ever got into it and they were completely gobsmacked that that was even a possibility. So you know, it, while it is just a thought and a dream initially to be able to then work really hard, you, know, you can monetize your passions and I'm proof that I've been able to do that here. So two very key lessons. Who knows what the lessons will be over the next couple of years, but they have definitely been some big ones in my first 12 months. My best ever flip of all time. Well, uh, I think back to my Facebook Marketplace furniture flipping days and I was able to sell two Silverwood buffet entertainment units. They went for about 600 bucks and I picked them up for about 50 bucks. There were two of them that I did and I made about 500 bucks on each of them. So about $1,000 in profit um, selling two pieces of furniture. It's definitely a good category to be in. Um, But I did also want to touch on uh, my best ever find in an op shop. And it was this one right here. This one came in a big basketball card bundle um, that I bought for $30. And this one was hiding in it. So this is, it came in its case. I've done nothing to it. Um, It's a LeBron James 2008 Fleer jersey card. So that's his actual jersey from, from 08. Now, I don't actually know how much this thing is worth. I think over time, it's going to grow to be worth a whole lot more than what it is now. So I think I'm definitely going to hold on to it for quite some time. But the average cost uh, would have been a couple of cents um, if you split out all the different cards that I was able to pick up for $30. So um, definitely the best ever, I mean, probably more on a personal level, the best ever thing that I've found in an op shop, as much as I love selling my shoes and and finding my shoes. um, Those Jordans were a pretty cool find a few months back as well. But that one right there, the basketball card, an unbelievable grab. The next one is around mentorship and has there been anyone that's kind of shaped me over the years and I definitely think there's two sporting stars that I listen to probably four to five times a week on YouTube, just various YouTube motivational videos, and that is Kobe Bryant and Conor McGregor. These guys are obsessive. I think from an athlete sense, if you can get to the top of your craft, it is because you are doggedly attacking it every single day and devoting your entire world to it. And there's a lot that you can take out of it from a personal life sense. And um, like I said, I listen to these guys all the time. They are huge influences on me. And you know, Kobe Bryant with his mama mentality, and the stories of that guy throughout his basketball career are really just incredible. And he transcends sport. It's just not always about the game of basketball with him. You can really put that into different pockets of your own world. And uh, and he, he was just a, a huge influence while he was around. Conor McGregor, um, he really truly believed in the law of attraction. Back when he was 15 years of age, he knew that he was going to be the best. And, uh, and he worked away at it every single day until he was the best. So I really appreciate guys like that. And uh, I feel like anyone can learn a lot from them. And um, I'll actually link uh, the videos that I watch literally almost every single week. Uh, into the description below for you guys to check out. But um, two huge influences, just more so from a mindset perspective and, and something that I try and adapt to and put into practice myself each and every day. I think that's about seven questions that I've answered in today's video. I might just leave it there. I'm really conscious about not having the video drag on for too long, but if you've enjoyed this sort of content where basically you guys just ask questions and I answer them for you, let me know in the comments. Uh, more than happy to keep doing them on a Tuesday, but um, like I said at the beginning of the video, there was a lot of questions that came through. I've only done seven out of about 30, um, so apologies if I didn't get to your question today, but I might hold on to them and do them in future weeks. Um, it was only five um, what sold items in this video today. If you want to check out a few more items that have sold over the last couple of weeks for me, uh, check out this video right here because this was a really good weekend of sales. But um, until next time, guys, appreciate you being here. Trip to the Thrift on Thursday. Can't wait for it. Hopefully, you can join me. Remember to hit the subscribe button. Give the video a like before you leave if you're still here watching now and uh, thanks very much for your support. We'll see you soon.